Step one, wake up early, gon' rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think real hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yo, set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Life ain't easy, y'all. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though I like always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo Negative thoughts are poison, they ride, uh Head full of flaws, so here come the clouds, uh They'll never stop unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost, uh yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause of sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. is for sure it appears he struggled with some things for quite some time. It's hard to imagine what little Maddie went through while she was living in the household with Stefan Stearns. My heart bleeds for the people that knew her and loved her the most. There are a lot of unknowns when it comes to Stefan Stearns and what he did to Maddie Soto. For those that don't know, sustenance is Stefan Stearns. This was deleted a while ago and it says, just to think old people are gross, people who force themselves bodily upon small children are gross. And his response was, we aren't talking about pedos and ours here. We're talking about family members trying to give affection like hugs and kisses, telling kids it's totally cool to refuse to reciprocate. That's where your best judgment as a parent comes in. If bad Uncle Touchy wants to go long gropey hug, then say no all day. But when sweet grandma wants a kiss on the cheek or a normal non-perverted family member wants to give them a hug, that for F sakes, what's the issue? No one is talking about forcing themselves on children here. So obviously we're seeing some cracks in the surface did mom know about this? Obviously, there were some things going on behind the curtain, and this was going on two years ago, about the time that we thought this abuse was happening with Maddie, according to law enforcement. So we're having all these conversations on these chats and reddits from him, and it's it seems like it's about his own life. And now we're learning he's been abusing Maddie for at minimum two years about the time this was posted. Let me know your thoughts.
The charges are absolutely disgusting. We are starting to see a disgusting picture unfold before our very eyes. Stefan Stern's charges have been upgraded to 60 additional charges. That's correct. Many of us are reeling, just wondering what this poor girl went through in her short life on this earth. I'm not gonna go through the charges that he has been charged with. They are deplorable, they are disgusting, and some of them happened before she was 12 years old. Stefan Stearns was a predator. Monsters like this do not deserve to breathe the same air as we do and what he did to this young girl, we will never forgive him for. May she rest in peace. In the Crystal Rogers case, two of Kentucky's highest courts released big decisions today, both ruling against Brooks Houck. Houck is charged with murder in connection to the 2015 disappearance of Crystal Rogers. He was arrested in September and has been in jail on a $10 million bond since then. Crystal Rogers is a mother of five beautiful kids that went missing on the July 4th weekend in 2015. Her boyfriend, Brooks Howe, came under heavy scrutiny about her disappearance back in 2015. Brooks Howe was later arrested after Joseph Lawson and the case kind of died out. There was some major shocks in the case when the state prosecutor, Brooke Howe's hearing, tells the judge that his brother, Nick, might have been the one that shot Crystal's father, Tommy Ballard. If you're unfamiliar with this case, Crystal is a, a beautiful young lady that disappeared in 2015 and her father went out looking for her and searching. Well, during a hunting, what many thought was a hunting accident, he was shot to death. And apparently during this hearing for Brooks Houck, it was alleged that his brother Nick may have killed Crystal's father. Waiting for testing to come back on the farm we believe was used to murder Tommy Ballard, farm that we purchased from Nicholas Howe, who was using a fake name. This case has a lot of twists and turns, and that's not it. In 2013, an officer was ambushed. His name is Jason Ellis. And people are starting to feel that this Jason Ellis is connected to this particular case with Crystal Rogers and Brooks Houck. So now we have three people arrested in connection with the death of Crystal Rogers, although her body has not yet been found. The Chief Justice ruling today, Nelson County Judge Charles Sims will be staying on the case, writing, quote, the defendant failed to demonstrate any disqualifying circumstance that would require the appointment of a special judge. Houck will stay in jail on a $10 million bond until his trial. His next court date is set for February of next year. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty Coffee Club. From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the coffee club. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you. God bless America. And more importantly, God bless our victims. Well, good morning, my beautiful cop.
coffee beans it's nice to see you this morning we got a lot of disturbing stuff to discuss today um very sad news when it comes to maddie soto we uh, learned to love this little girl <clears throat> this girl is 13 years old she disappeared uh the the afternoon at least we learned of this the afternoon or late evening of the 26th by the 28th her mom's boyfriend was behind bars with having some images of her or what we we believed was her a, a, a juvenile and it i don't think anybody was prepared for what we learned yesterday i think it was um sad um i think for you know just heartbreaking, I think it's the first and foremost. It was just heartbreaking to learn. Um, I think angry came across to me, um, but mostly sadness when I read this, when I heard what this young girl has gone through. We're not going to, we're gonna discuss a little bit about the crimes, but we're not gonna go too much into detail. Um, I think that you guys, probably have heard it on several different channels at this point. I don't think we need to um, go through the details here. We'll go, we'll touch on some of the disturbing stuff, but it, 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 it was just shocking. I, I think that is the most, um, the best way to describe what I personally read. Just shocking. Like, I, I don't even know what to say. So uh, just prepare if you guys are queasy, if this, you know, you have, I don't like doing disclaimers. My personal belief is, is if you have any type of PTSD type of situations when it comes to topics like this, you shouldn't uh, be watching topics like this uh, in all fairness. So I don't like giving disclaimers, but in, um, in just a, in the spirit of YouTube and X, if you have a problem with some of the topics, if you are a survivor of certain crimes and topics are a little sensitive for you, this might be the time to turn off. I'm going to go through roll call and just say hi to everybody. And then we are going to get uh, started. We're going to start on Maddie Soto first, and then we'll move into the Crystal Rogers updates um, uh, in the second half of this because uh, Maddie, I just, it's just, it's sad. And I know that people that are coming in are coming in to hear about Maddie um, and the new case, right? So uh, good morning, Jules. It's nice to see you. It's me, Jen. It's nice to see you as well. Pittsburgh nurse. Good morning, my love. MJ, Kathy, it's nice to see you. Our beautiful Sonia up in the house. I'm wearing another one of her fabulous designs. Roses are red, skies are blue. I mind my own business, so why don't you, right? I don't know if that's a, an accurate statement. I, I keep in my own lane, but I am a nosy person, right? If when it comes to cases, I'm very nosy. I wanted, I want all the information I'm entitled to, nosy, right? So it's nice to see you, Ki. It's nice to see you. Good morning, my love. Uh, Patricia, good morning. Crafty Chris is up in the house. Vanna, it's nice to see you. Yes, Vanna, it is absolutely horrific. Uh, like I said, we're going to try to go through this. There's, you know, it's obviously newsworthy, so we're going to discuss it. Um, however, we're going to be very delicate with it because I got to tell you, it is just, it's absolutely disturbing to me. I mean, we we go cover cases, we cover disturbing um, situations on here, but I got to say, I. It's, it's going to be hard for me to go through this with uh, without being, you know, physically upset. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's a, a lot of the reasons why I personally can't go through the details of this case, because I don't think I can make it through the show if I went through the details of the case. They're that disturbing for me. Um, November rain, it's nice to see you, Jules. I think I already said hi to you, Jules. <laughs> hi again. Uh, second thesis, it's nice to see you up in here. She came, she ran calling wildfire. It's nice to see you, my love. Manic Mama T is up in the house. Our beautiful. I am Team Summer. Dun, 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 dun. Exploited Innocence is up in the house. Good morning, my love. Devil Doll is up in the house. Guidance, our beautiful guidance. Bookworm Terry. 
our resident uh, defense attorney, just a little bit of uh, tears and some snot running out your nose, and you're not guilty, Mike Stevens, Big Mac Mike, our one and only, don't, 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 our turkey man is up in the house. It's nice to see you, my love. It's nice to see you, Bobby. It's nice to see you as well. Good morning. Good morning, Allison. It's nice to see you. Uh, Miss uh, Mick Melissa, it's nice to see you. Oh, yeah, closer to five years. Yes. Um, the details in the report is, again, it goes before her 12th birthday. I think some of them, I think when we were looking at it, it's 2000. Some of these were back in, what was it, February 2019. Um, just it, 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 holy, holy, holy disturbing. Holy disturbing. Um, so disturbing that it's, it's making me very, very uncomfortable, disturbing. Like I, I'm just, <sighs> Miss Robin, it's nice to see you, my love. Kimberly, good morning. Good morning. Moonlight magic is up in the house. It's nice to see you as well. Shay Shay. Good morning. Good morning. It's me, Jen, and MJ, if I didn't say hi to you. All right, guys. So this is, I'm sure you guys have heard, you know, yesterday there was some breaking news. There was a 36-page doc drop um, on the Osceola Clerk of Courts website. People got a hold of the report. It is public record. I just want to let you know uh, this is a court proceeding, okay? So you're going to have court records uh, that are out. And regardless of how you feel about the information being distributed, unfortunately, it's public record. Okay. This guy has to be uh, charged, which he is. Uh, he has to be arraigned. He has to go through a court proceeding. Okay. A criminal court proceeding. Criminal court proceedings in our country, just like every other court proceeding, um, is public. OK, some of the stuff that they're going to be submitting in that that court proceeding will be confidential. That basically means unless you're at the trial, you will not have the, the you will not see that information ever. It's confident, confidential information to public. It's not up for public disclosure, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to be shown in the trial court. So <clears throat> what we are receiving is a legal document that outlines the charges against Stefan Stern. There's a lot of legal ease in there, and I think it's making people's hair on the back of their head stand up. Oh, a year and a half. Oh my gosh, November rain. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. That made my day. That made my day. Um, so this is a legal document outlining his charges and what he did to be charged with those things. And it's awful. It's awful. Um, I will describe just in very general, and we're going to be general over and done with this, uh, from 2019 to most likely 2024, this young child has been abused in the head region, the bottom region, and backside, okay? That is all I'm willing to say. It This poor girl was abused in every way you could imagine, her body being abused. So that is the, the last we're going to discuss of what she went through. Now we're going to discuss, this story is awful. Oh, thank you, Steph. God bless you. It is awful. It's, and it's, it's hard to discuss because... You know, there's a lot of women in here that have suffered the trauma that this young girl has suffered. And their hearts, you know, they have such mixed feelings. I mean, emotional, strong emotional feelings about this because it's like, how can this happen to this little girl and nobody know that this stuff is happening to her? I mean, we're all angry. And we all need somebody to blame. First and foremost, we need to point the finger directly at Stefan Stearns. He is a predator. But you know what? 
the bottom line is, is mom was there too. And what did mom know? What did she overlook? You know, and we can't really blame her just yet. I mean, it's getting close because I don't understand how they were able to keep this a secret this long. Thank you, Jen. God bless you. That's the problem I'm having. You know, only only my my survivors in here can really explain it. I didn't. I I do not have the this experience. I only have what is said to me by others. I haven't lived it. I haven't seen it personally. I've only heard stories. So I don't know for the people that were able to keep this silent for so many years. I, I, I don't know, you know, God bless you for, I mean, I don't know how you did it. I really don't. I have to think that it, it must have been a very miserable life. You know, I can't imagine. I can't imagine, you know, I just, I, I don't even want to imagine. It, it's so bothersome for me. Um, Guidance is saying there are signs. In my opinion, she put the relationship first because going back to 2019, how can you not know? I get upset. We're all upset. We're all upset. But it is, you know, and I keep going back because, you know, mental illness is, I don't know if we want to call it an epidemic in this country or, you know, but we do have a lot of mental illness could is it possible that he was controlling her through her mental illness manipulating her through her mental illness you know i just uh, i guess you know and, and, and in fairness maybe making excuses maybe i'm trying to find a, a you know in my own mind i think i'm trying because i just don't see her as this monster and maybe i'm justifying things that i shouldn't be justifying i am a human being you know um, but I just, it's so hard. I was raised with a monster like this. And once he died three years ago, I feel like I don't have to look behind my back as much. It's sad. She was a beautiful little girl, Patricia. She absolutely was. I'm tired. I'm tired of parents not following their gut instinct. Nothing can convince me that she didn't feel in her gut something was off or wrong. Yes. Now that is, I have to believe, and those are what I'm talking about, her ignoring major red flags uh, that were being exhibited. Even her friends, when she started, it's like you saw this pattern um, where it almost seemed like sometime in 2022, this major isolation took place in the family dynamic where um, Stefan's Stefan's uh, behavior was that where he ran people off uh, and people didn't want to come over and people did not want to hang out with Jen anymore. She lost a friendship uh, that we know publicly. And I'm sure if there's one, there's probably more. Uh, and, and, and that lady, she trusted her gut and she said, I'm not going over there. I'm not going over there. I'm not having anything to do with it. That man's armed. He's not taking his medication. And he's talking about unaliving himself in front of Jennifer. I'm not going over there. I don't blame you. I don't blame anybody that doesn't want to be put in a situation like that, but that shows you that there was a situation. I, 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 I would love to know if it, you know, around what time that was when their, their friendship actually ended. But I think you're right because how could she not know? How could she? I mean, obviously there were some chaotic things going on. I mean, he was making some really outlandish posts in Reddit justifying actions about kids and you know hugging and and, and kissing a, a you know a little old grandma. It's like who who argues about that? And 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 if a kid doesn't want to show affection to sweet grandma. You know, you've got to ask yourself why, you know, I'm a dog person, right? I'm a dog person. And sometimes dogs are temperamental. You know, um, I, I'm very acutely aware of dogs' temperaments, um, you know, and, and, and when dogs exhibit uh, certain temperaments, what that threshold, like where, where I'm at, <laughs> do I need to run now or do I need to run later? <laughs> you know, so I, I, I'm acutely aware of, of that. So it's like, you know, 
I almost want to engage like your gut to, you know, the, the animal's instincts. You know, when, when you have an animal that's really super sweet and in for the first time they're ready to tear somebody's hand off, you got to look at that person and think, man, that guy got, you know, I'm just saying you, you automatically think that your dog loves people and this person, your dog just doesn't like, I'll tell you my neighbor, my neighbor next door. He has a little dog. He just got, well, she didn't just get her. He's had her for a couple years now. I think she's two, maybe three. I don't know how long he's had her. She's cute. She's cute as a button. I love her. I've seen her since she was a puppy. I used to feed her through the fence, little treats. And she, she, she loves me, right? She loves me. But there's one person in our neighborhood. He lives down the road. I'm not going to say any names or anything like that. That dog, that sweet little dog, every time he comes around, she goes absolutely nuts. And you know what? I trust her instinct. <laughs> I know the person and I know how shady they are. And like, she does not like this. He's never hurt her. He's never done anything wrong to her. But she just does not like this man. Sweet as a button to everybody. She just licks me. She jumps in my arm. She licks me to death. She just loves, loves, loves. A stranger comes over. She looks, sniffs him a little bit. Next thing you know, she's in her arms. She sees this dude. She's all teeth. I mean, so I got to think, you know, women have instincts like that. We all have these. The, I think women's instincts are a little more in tune than men's. I'm just... I'm saying, I'm not trying to be a sexist, but I kind of think that women's intuition and their guts are more in tune than guys. I think guys miss, like, I don't think guys are detailed oriented. I just don't. You know, if you're talking about building a house, yeah, they're detail oriented. You talk about life, they're lost in the freaking, and before you even say the end of the life, right? Before you get to the F and E. So it's, I, I just think that, but yeah, I, I have to agree that I think her gut has been telling her for a long time something isn't right. And then I find it a little odd because we're hearing rumors that they were split up during this. You know, I, I haven't been able to corroborate any legitimate source uh, that states whether or not this man is her boyfriend or her ex-boyfriend. Because even in the interview, she didn't refer to him as a boyfriend. She referred to him as a partner. A partner. She didn't refer to him as my husband, my boyfriend, my fiance. She referred to him as partner. And I find that odd because, I mean, I've got a lot of gay friends. So my gay friends refer to their significant other as a partner. I have a, I have a, uh, a gay friend that's married to his partner. Married. And does it call him husband? Still calls him his partner. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe that's just them. Maybe other people call each other husbands or wives or whatever. I don't know. Um, but they he still calls him his partner. So I, I don't know. Um, and it's not like I'm going to ask. <laughs> you know, it's not my business. <laughs> whatever, right? Um, the only reason I know the date was because I lost... This discussion by Betty. What was it? Was the last one was discussed in here by Betty. I wasn't being rude, just excited. The B being size all. Oh, I didn't see your comment, second thesis. No worries. Uh, she can't hide behind being crazy. Her daughter is gone. No excuses for that poor no, for that poor excuse for the mother. No, well, yeah. Mike Stevens is is a little butthurt over this. I mean, everybody's a little butthurt. I'm butthurt. I, there ain't no doubt about in my mind how, how upset I am over this. And it makes it harder and harder because I've been a strong proponent or, you know, supporter of uh, Jen Soto because I don't think of her as this monster. I've seen a lot of uh, monsters, but I guess, you know, if you're looking at it and we have to agree that this was going on and the mother had to have had some type of inclination over the years that something was a little odd with um, the behaviors of her boyfriend and her daughter. I mean, there had to have been weird gestures, but could they have said it was just like their secret club or whatever? Like, you know, they had this whole thing of, you know, because you got to think of the manipulation aspect of it and the actual grooming aspect of it. And that would be really, um, you know, solidifying the child's, you know, 
liken you. So I think that's when all those toys and, you know, painting the, the figurines and, you know, giving her, getting her attention on a platform and stuff like that and getting the kudos from strangers about her great work and stuff like that. I think really all of that does play into this story somewhere. Um, I believe all of that it, it explains a little bit of how maybe he was able to do some of the stuff he was able to do. Um, was it undetected? I don't know. This is where my confusion comes in because I look at this woman and, you know, from my understanding of her friends, uh, even past friends, talk about her love for her daughter. Uh, she didn't seem like she was an abusive woman. Seems like she loved her daughter and loved to have fun with her daughter. So it's like, you know, we see these horrible parents all the time. But if she was missing clues because she didn't want to lose her boyfriend or she didn't want to come to grips that she was having to make the decision to lose her boyfriend. That's where I have a problem. And I do believe, you know, with everything here that it rises to at least that. And so if we're right now at this, this level of the case, you know, my opinion is starting to change about the mom, you know, uh, even willful or blissful unawareness was because she ignored it. When you're a parent, you don't get the luxury of ignoring that. You just don't. I mean, we get, uh, you know, uh, animal lovers. I don't, you know, we get offended if, if somebody doesn't look at our cat the right way. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine her sitting there and scuffing off that her daughter lives in fear and can't even sleep in her own bed and never even wonders why? She never even wonders why her daughter's so fearful. She never sat down and talked to her daughter about why she was fearful. And if she didn't, why? Lack of time? Why? You know, there are some things here. I just, I, I don't feel, I feel if she didn't sit down and talk to her daughter, she willfully chose not to sit down and talk to her daughter. She didn't want to deal with it. And, and why didn't she want to deal with it? Maybe she didn't think it rose to this level or not. But how are you going to know unless you ask the stinking questions to your kids or open that door so your kids feel comfortable enough to speak to you? But I don't want to blame. This is my issue. If we blame mom and we find out mom had no clue, you know, we're just as bad, right? We just put this mom that just lost her daughter through pure hell. But it's hard to say that, you know, there weren't some major red flags, kind of like her friend said, you know, when, when Stefan was telling her he was going to unalive herself himself and she just thought it was no big deal. Like as if it was going on regularly, she blew it off. I don't know any of us that would blow that kind of threat off. I mean, if, if somebody in my household threatened that the first thing I'm doing is calling 911 and having them mentally evaluated. I, cause I, I mean, think about it. If, if, if I don't do something and they go off and hurt themselves, it's not my fault that they hurt myself, but I will always punish myself for not taking that allegation seriously. And she didn't take it seriously. And the reason she didn't take it seriously is probably because he threatened it a thousand times and never did anything. She knows it's just hot air, or at least she thinks it's hot air. Maybe it was the distraction to get it off the topic that she was really under, you know, worried about. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she just didn't want to know. Maybe she just thought he was being rough with Maddie and that was okay for her. Who knows? I still, I still don't think she knew to this level. I really don't. There's just something that just is still telling me she didn't know to this level. I, I, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm all confused. This case has got me just um, emotional. <laughs> I don't know of any other way to describe it than an, an emotional, just emotional. It's, it's a rough case to cover. Uh, in my opinion, mom is different kind of a monster. Yeah. Like that, that, and that's what I was kind of getting at. If she ignored, um, these red flags, I mean, that's still ignoring, it's still putting your daughter in danger because you didn't want to take precautions. You know, this is, I know that a thousand people may not take precautions and, and their kids are just fine. Right. But 
what if it's not? We always should always just take the precautions. An ounce of prevention, right? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This is not a cure. Um, it says a lot of times the predator using the family against the victim, threatening them if they speak. That is how it can be hidden. However, in Maddie's case, after reading uh, the post, I feel um, her mom knew. Yeah, and a lot of people, there's been a 50-50 uh, split in my chat since we started running with this case uh, with people that think her mom knew. Uh, but I think everybody um, at least acknowledged she should have had some red flags. I think this um, court document kind of solidifies that there had to have been many red flags. I, I, there's not a doubt in my mind at, at this point, did um, Jen uh, Soto just, I, I, it's hard to explain, but if Maddie did tell her, or, or if Maddie didn't tell her, I think I have to agree with, with Miss Robin that her mother would have still had something uneasy about her, that there's, there was some kind of instinctual uneasiness that she would have had she may not have been able to put her finger on it but she had to have known something uh, after that 60 page, page report it's hard to say that that's not the case because that would have had to have been this case this girl had to have been walking around sad what about her under who's washing this girl's clothes i mean when some of this stuff happens and why? And again, why wasn't her mom asking her? Why wasn't she, why she was so terrified to sleep alone? I mean, she was getting of the age. Now, granted, I know a lot of kids that sleep in, in bed with their moms. I mean, my my little sister, <laughs> she's like a monkey. Like she, she's she's an adult now, and if she comes home, she wants to snuggle next to my mom. I mean, there's just no my mom, but my mom's mom, right? I mean, she made she always makes a great little home, right? Um, so it's not that I don't understand that, but that's not what grandma said. You know, you hear me talking about my sister climbing in bed with my mom, and it's because she wants to snuggle with my mom. You know, you don't hear me saying my sister's crawling and doesn't want to sleep alone because she's in fear. She's doing it because it's comfortable. She, you know, she's at ease. She's next to her mommy, right? Got to remember, my little sister was basically raised as an only child. I find uh, that only children are very, very clingy to their parents in most cases. And they have good homes, right? And they have good homes. Uh, that mother needs needs to not have any more children if she puts a man over her children. I, I agree. If that's if that's what it is, is that if that's the case. But here's the thing. This is what's this is what's uh, problematic for me, like law enforcement. Uh, must be missing a key piece of evidence or trying to connect the dots because I still don't understand why at this point they haven't charged anybody with any crimes related to Maddie. Um, it's it's problematic for me for a couple reasons. I know that they would have already had to have the autopsy and at least a preliminary, you know, preliminary results, whether it's typed up in a report and in, in, in proofed and in, in the stamp of approvals on it, they have to have preliminary results of what happened to her, what injury she, she sustained. I'm pretty sure that um, her vaginal and, and other things like that are, are going to be very problematic for many of us to understand or uh, want to even hear about. I don't want to know, but I know it's going to be part of the conversation. Um, but we have to we have to at least acknowledge that they have those preliminary results in because they've already released Maddie. Maddie's already been able to be buried, whether she was cremated or buried. That's it's, you know, she's, she's put to rest. Okay. Um, so that tells me that the, the medical examiner is done. Their job is done. And if the medical examiner is the one that's, that knows what the injuries are, obviously they know what the preliminary results are. So they have the preliminary results. They have her, they know that right where apparently Stefan Stearns may have had a flat tire or near the area he had a flat tire. Um, they, they located her and she was deceased. So I think they have a lot of dots connected. So I'm unsure why nobody right now 
has even been charged. I mean, even like even if mom wasn't going to be charged, uh, that's one thing. But they they ended up finding all these records and and are charging him with unrelated charges. These are even though they're um, voluminous, they are unrelated to her disappearance or her death. There are all other things that happened prior to her disappearance and her death, and they are disturbing. That does lead us down a, a very dark road of who may have done this. And of course, with him being behind bars, him having access to her, him being the last person that saw her breathing or alive. And, um, you know, the, the misstatements from the mom, I'm going to call them misstatements from the mom for right now, because uh, for I, I said from the beginning with her responses, I felt like she um, didn't see Maddie that morning. I think she thought she was getting up and getting ready. I don't know why um, she would have that inclination. I didn't get that she was being deceptive that at that that stage, only with what she was wearing. So I was sitting there thinking, you know, how would her mom know that she was up getting ready for school, uh, but not really know what she was wearing that morning when she left. And the only thing I could really, that really kind of came to the forefront was maybe the shower was running and he, meaning Stefan, implied she was up and in the shower. And I thought that that would probably be the what best way to explain that because I honestly believe mom, it was either that or mom never woke up that morning before they left to go to school. Because mom had a hard time waking up in the mornings. And it was because of her bipolar medication. Now, that statement from that lady was from 2022, but it sounded like even from her own mother, when she was speaking to Telemundo, speaks about how hard it is for her to get up in the mornings. So it sounds like this is a chronic issue for her. So anyways, um, that's just where we're at. I'm going to take you over here. We're going to watch a little video. We're going, of course, it's got to be commercial first, but then we're going to watch a little video. On Actually, I don't want this one up yet because we're not into Crystal Rogers just just yet. Might as well go into Crystal Rogers. For, for those that you, and we'll come back to the Maddie uh, Soto, because it sounds like we're going to have a lot more conversation. Let me just make sure I got everybody's questions. We have all kinds of trolls hiding in the bushes, just lurking to hear anything. <laughs> That's why I said that. Oh, yeah, we know that. There's people, and you know what, they, they obviously have some mental illness. Like, who does that? That's so stupid. It's sad childish and to think that these people are adults uh, thank you for gifting the membership yes Jen thank you for that if you received your gifted membership don't forget to say thank you to Jen uh, Southern Grammy I hope you're doing well today I hope you're getting ready to get out of the damn hospital we want you out we want you out uh, Manic Mama T says Maddie's case makes me want to go uh, wicked witch on Stefan I know it's 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 hard right like it it really makes you want to like literally rip into him it gives you that this case in in hearing hearing what this poor little girl went through i mean not just recently i mean i can't even imagine uh what this girl was going through recently that it, it brought her to her death you know it had to have been horrific it had to have been absolutely horrific to get to this point. Um, but even her, but before this, you know, her poor, her poor, everything that she was going through before this, 2019, we don't believe that it stopped from 2019 to 2022. We, I just don't believe it. Unless we find out that there was a major break in the family and he didn't come back until 2022. Um, you know, there is something like that, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to try to allege. Um but her just everything, it just, it, 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 it kills us. It, it, the idea, it makes, it, it's angry. It's anger. That's, that's what I said. You know, the first thing that came over me was this sadness and just, you know, but the next, the next thing was anger, like anger. And it's hard to keep that anger in check because it's like, how did the effing family, I mean, even let's look past mom, let's look at grandma, let's look at everybody, the school, the friends, the families. That everybody, how did nobody know that this girl was suffering like this? How did nobody know? It makes us all very, very angry. Very, very angry. And if people want to be in the bushes to get that reaction, if you're not angry, 
You're part of the problem. Who is not angry over this child right now? Like, I've got a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions. And I told you, as information comes ava becomes available, I'm willing to start getting off the fence, but not before. And we all have to understand. I now got to put it like this. Even, even people without children have motherly instincts. Where was grandma? Grandma lived close by. Grandma lived close by, right? So anyways, guys, I, uh, well, well, why not? Hmm. So we're going to get over to Crystal. We'll come back to, to Maddie. We'll come back to Maddie and talk about her and the other second half. So if you guys have any questions, um, uh, Beraria, if I'm saying Beria, if I'm saying her name right, I believe my little girl, when she told me about my boyfriend, I did all the right things, left him, reported him, got her counseling. They wouldn't charge him. He essayed two more girls before conviction. Ah, so it's like, you know, it, it, it's upsetting because you hear stories like that. It's like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't, you know, you damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And then in, in, in situations like this, but I think, I think the court systems are starting to become acutely aware of um, this behavior from, from predators. I think they're realizing that this behavior is not going to stop. They, they can't stop. I, I, I think that that's what people don't understand is when you're this type of predator, it, it, it's almost a compulsion. It, 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 I don't know how to explain it other than that. Like you, you physically at some point can't control your, we would like to think you can, but under, obviously they can't because they, they would do it knowing they're going to be the suspect and they would still do it. Look at, at Stephen McDougal. He knew he would be the prime suspect. He knew he would be the prime suspect and it still did not stop him. They're that sick. I don't know if Jenna's hiding per se. I think she went to the media to find Maddie. Once he was charged, she was found. She didn't have a need for the media. I bet she's embarrassed. She might be, you know, not just embarrassed, but um, I, in, in just trying to play devil's advocate and trying to be fair. And maybe I'm a little biased. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but. I don't know if embarrassed is really the right word. I mean, she did lose a kid. Uh, I have to think that this is a very painful um, event to be going through, especially if she blew off a lot of stuff, especially if she blew off a lot of red flags and those, those red flags cost her her daughter. I can't imagine the guilt uh, and the pain um, we, we, we definitely have a lot of blame. There's no, no doubt about that. And I, I've got to be honest, I'm sure she is blaming herself and this is taking a heavy toll. I'm not sure, you know, some people say that she's over at her sister's house and, and maybe she is just trying to hide or get away, but it could be the realization of what went on inside that home where she just can't even walk inside that home anymore. Um, I have to imagine that even the sight of that home uh, has to be pretty traumatic for the family. I can't imagine them. I bet you that house is going to be sold as soon as they're able to sell it. You know, I would not want, I don't know what I would do if I was, you know, what we'd love to say I would never be in her shoes, but we don't know. We don't know how she got here. We don't know how Maddie got here. Uh, we know that there was abuses and we know that those abuses uh, were at the hands of Stefan Stearns. Other than that, we really don't know any major factual information, even with us saying that um, her mom should have known, that's still an emotional response, right? She should have had a gut instinct, right? That's still emotional response. It doesn't mean she had a gut instinct. It just means that we as in the public perceive that she should have had a gut instinct. And maybe she did. And maybe she blew it off. Maybe her daughter came up and said that this man was hurting her in, in, in her private area and her mommy dismissed it. 
We don't know how we got here. It literally could be anything. But one thing we do know is that Stefan Stearns is a predator. Is a predator. And as I said it before, before this, this um, paperwork came out, I said, I believe he targeted this family to get to this girl. And it sounds like potentially his abuse started very, very early on in this relationship within the first year. So that assessment may actually be accurate, as disgusting as it as the assessment was. But a lot of these things are hitting on that predatory assessment. And I got to tell you, I, I feel like Jen was just manipulated the shit out of. I just, I feel like she was in this, this bubble, this like bubble. I don't know how to explain it. I just, and it's not, and, it, and, and that's even a feeling, right? We're talking about, well, we can't put this. I mean, even my stuff, that's just how I feel. That's an emotional response as to why I, I'm having a hard time thinking that this woman has, has hurt her daughter or intentionally put her daughter in harm's way. I mean, it, it, every new thing coming out. It's be it's becoming clear. It's hard not for her, you know, for her mom not to have known. But you know, I'm also applying a lot of variables here. You know, did her mom know? Did her not mom? I just don't want to believe her mom knew, and just allowed it to continue. I'm just having it's. It, I'm having a hard time with that. There are moms that I feel like, yeah, that's I could see that happening all day long. But I'm having a hard time with this mom. I don't know why. I'm not having this problem with Sebastian's mom. <laughs> I can tell you that. I'm having this problem with Jen's Jen. I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. I just saw something different in her face than maybe other people did. I don't know. Maybe it's wishful thinking, right? I don't know. God bless her little heart. She was one of God's little angels. She was. She was. All right, so let me just get back over here. Okay, I think I got this up now. Let me get it started before we... There we go. We're going to see a little commercial. The Mets Group represents the region's finest properties with expert skill and the most innovative technology available. This Louisville born and bred team has decades of experience in home buying and selling, flipping and remodeling. They can even help secure your dream vacation home through Florida licensed real town new developments in the crystal rogers case joseph lawson has added his name to a petition to move the trial out of nelson county his attorney said he can't get a fair trial there and would rather it be moved to boyd or davis counties brooks hauk the main suspect in that case has made the same request hauk steve lawson and his son joseph have all been charged in connection to crystal rogers death all three expected back in court on march 21st Brooks Houck will stay in jail, by the way, on that $10 million bond until his trial. The Kentucky Supreme Court denied his attorney's request to review the case. It was his last chance at a different ruling. Houck was arrested last September and charged with complicity to murder and the death of his girlfriend, Crystal Rogers. His bond was set at $10 million. If you guys remember, <clears throat> Brooks uh, was complaining that he thought his bail was too high because in, in all fairness, it was the highest bail ever set in their in the history of that county. It was a $10 million bail, and it's because he has amassed a massive amount of wealth. He has over $10 million worth of assets, you know, not liquid assets, but property and other stuff like that. So it, it it's one of those things, and he thought, well, it's the highest, you know, it's ever been, so they tried to appeal it to a higher court to reduce that bond. They don't want this man out. This man, let me just give you a little history about um, this entire case. She disappeared in 2015. He became a prime suspect in 2015, and her father was beating the pavement, trying to connect the dots. And in 2016, um, at first, many people thought that this was a uh, an accident, a gun-related accident, and they learned they learned very early on uh, when they got to the scene that um, Tommy Ballard, which was uh, Crystal Rogers' dad, was actually executed, basically, on his property. So this case pretty much died down. Whatever maybe Tommy had 
or information that helped connect the dots, maybe, potentially, or he was getting really stinking close. He lost his life over. They charged Brooks. Brooks had to, they ended up dropping the charges or something uh, around 2016. The case went absolutely cold. No justice, no justice, no justice. Nobody was even paying attention to the case. And then boom, all of a sudden, um, the, the son Lawson, I can't remember what his name, Joseph Lawson, ended up getting arrested in the case. And we're like, and we learned that this was an employee or a part-time employee to Brooks. And then, I don't know, the case kind of died down again. After all this time, like 2016, nothing really happened. Now, Brooks got into a little bit of trouble stealing some stuff from a Home Depot or a Lowe's without paying for it or something like that. Uh, he ended up get, walking on that as well. You know, if you got money, and I have to think that his family with their wealth are politically uh, aligned with some politicians in there, which could have affected this. Which could have affected this. They had nothing, apparently. But then all of a sudden in 2023, we start getting, um, Joseph gets arrested. It dies down and then boom, Brooks is hauled in and he's never, he's never left jail since. They hit him with a $10 million bond. In the bond hearing, the state prosecutor tells um, the world that they purchased this gun from his brother, Nick. Um, and the gun is believed to be the gun that killed Tommy Ballard. So we've all been sitting here waiting with bated breath to find out if Nick Houck is going to be arrested. You know, is Mama going to be arrested? Their ma the mafia mom. She going to be arrested. I believe she knew a whole lot. But just because I believe it doesn't make it so. So there's a lot going in here. And so they, he, he addressed the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, no, we're not taking this case. So basically, he's up Schitt's Creek without a paddle. He's going to be in, in jail. Either he's going to be coming up with $10 million to get out or he's going to sit there until his trial. And he's, I don't think he's going to make it out of his trial. I mean, he's going to yeah, obviously make it out physically, but um, I think he's going to be convicted. I think they have enough against him at this point. She's deceased. She hasn't been heard or seen from since that night. He can say she tried to run away all day long, but she didn't. Just because he says it doesn't make it so. million dollars and a judge denied a request to lower it. He cited Houck's vast financial resources, his family history of interfering with the investigation and the severity of the murder charge. He's expected in court again in about a week along with the other two charged in the case. So that's going to be in a that's going to be in about a week. Let me get this one over here. We're just going to pop through these and then I'm going to let you guys also new tonight. The man charged with the murder of missing Barstow mother Crystal Rogers once his trial moved. The motion filed today by Brooks Houck's attorneys argues he can't get a fair trial in Nelson County or any central Kentucky County, including Jefferson or Fayette. Houck is scheduled to be uh, tried next February for killing Rogers, who disappeared in 2015. Joseph Lawson and his father, Steve Lawson, are charged with conspiracy to commit murder. The change of venue motion will be heard when all three suspects are back in court in two weeks. Also new tonight, the man... I'm sorry. And I think that the other one's pretty much just more of the same. So I believe now with that one, that makes all three of them uh, have requested, it might just be the two, but I believe it's all three of them, uh, Joseph, Steve, and uh, Brooks that have requested their uh, trials be moved out of the county. And it sounds like several counties, a tri-county um, area stating that they're not going to be able to get a fair trial there. I'm not sure if that's true. I mean, three counties, it's like, uh, you know, I mean, you're popular. But you, one thing I've noticed being in this business and being boots on the ground out there, it is amazing to me how many people, when we go into these communities, that can literally be over one. Oh, no, no. Oh, you guys didn't hear the last video? Okay, well, it doesn't really matter. It's all of this, one of the same, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not worried too worried about it. Um. But uh, what was I saying? I forgot what I was about to say. 
I'm sorry, but the mother needs to protect and believe her child. Yeah, but the problem is we have no evidence that her daughter even told her. We're still trying to find out whether Maddie kept this to herself. Because even Maddie's friends didn't have, um, have a clue that this was going on. So if her friends, like, I feel like she would have talked to her friends before she talked to her mom, especially if this has been going on for a significant number of years, she might have, have asked her friends, is, is this normal? Is this how your, your dad punishes you or, you know, stuff like that. Like, I, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like her, her friends would have known a little more about what was going on, especially if it went there. That's what's leading me to believe that she didn't tell anybody. And, and again, I could be totally wrong, but I can't find any corroborated information, nothing, nothing in print form, um, you know, anybody saying anything. I mean, yeah, we have people saying red flags, but not red flags related to the abuse on Maddie. Uh, even her friends are talking about the red flags being Stefan himself and actions and behaviors uh, he was doing at that time himself, such as uh, they got into a fight and he threatened to unalive himself, you know, and, and even her friend says, I don't know what the fight was about, what the argument was about that led him to say that. But it, again, it, 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 none of the stuff that even her friends were talking about as to why they're not friends with her anymore had anything to do with uh, Stefan's relationship with Maddie. It was the way Stefan was actually treating and behaving toward Jennifer. And so, the, I mean, I agree a hundred percent that if she told her mother, she should have been believed and her mother should have protected her. But my, my problem is, is nobody has been able, I mean, we can say that we think that Maddie told her, we can say that um, we've seen this before and, and, and we guarantee that Maddie's mom knew and just didn't believe her. We can say that all day long. We can say that till the cows come home. We can say that until we convince everybody that that's the truth. But there's nothing supporting that that we can corroborate at this point. And that's where I'm at. I'm not dismissing the feelings. I'm not dismissing the fact that we believe that that she should have known or that there were some major red flags in this family. I, I don't, I'm not disputing that at all. I think there absolutely were. But if we bring that back down, even with her uneasiness and looking at that, was she, did, did this whole thing of him potentially being this type of abusive to Maddie ever come up? There's nothing with her friends or her family that indicate it ever has. So that's where my problem is, is at. Should mom have, have felt something uneasy? Yes. But what did mom really know? And was he in her he head saying, you're acting crazy again? And mentally manipulating this woman to make her think that what she was really seeing was what she wasn't seeing. You know, mind effing her. This is a predator that has a gift of looking normal to the rest of us for years. Meanwhile, having complete and utter control over a minor for years. I just feel, I just, my heart just breaks. I mean, it even breaks for the mom, even if the mom not looked the other way. I don't, again, I'm of the belief she didn't know this level. Did she know that there was something uneasy going on? Did she know that there was a souring of the relationship between her daughter and this man? Most likely she did, but I just don't feel that she knew to this level. I mean, hell, we've been covering this case for, for uh, a week since it happened, since the 26th or the 27th, we've been covering this case. And I don't think any of us, I, I know, I certainly didn't. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to put words into anybody else's mouth, but I had no clue it ro rose to the level that I read in that information sheet of his charges. I was, like I said, it was jaw dropping and I was speechless. I, I, I mean, I knew that there was something there. Obviously, I knew that this child had been abused. You know, I knew that I was prepared for that. But I wasn't prepared for the graph, the gravity and the graphic nature in which he abused this child.
Kathy B believes that this, and we've been hearing some stuff about a hotel that was around there and this, that, and the other, but there's so far, I haven't heard anything leaking those two cases together at all. So I'm not sure. I mean, it's possible. I'm not going to dismiss that, but honestly, I just haven't um, heard that. I haven't heard that just, you know, the, the actual connection between them. Uh, she's listening to her lawyer and you know what, in all fairness, um, she needs a lawyer, right? Uh, no matter how you look at this, that lady needs a lawyer. There is a lot of stuff going on here. I can't imagine being in her, her shoes. I can't imagine what she's going through, but more importantly, it just makes me uneasy because I'd like to know, you know, I don't want to, uh, be a support. Now, and I don't even want to call it a supporter. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to be factual when it comes to this because one, it's in my own backyard. Uh, two, this is a a child that I truly believe this predator uh, preyed on this family to get to this child. Uh, there's not not all the time do I feel that way, but as soon as this case came out, that's exactly how I felt about this case. Um, I knew that this case, uh, that the abuse had gone on probably longer than the 2022, which again, I think we all felt that, but I still don't think I, I, I guess I just didn't even imagine some of the stuff that was described. It was just, it was heartbreaking. I, I, I don't, I just can't. She has a poor excuse for a mother. She didn't listen to her own little girl, but again, that's that's an assumption. We need to have proof that she knew something. Just because we think she knew something doesn't make it so, guys. It just doesn't. I mean, I I don't know how else. I, I wish somebody could just bring me a little something, something. But but again, her friend, I can't. I don't think it could have said it even you know better. Is that she definitely ignored a lot of red signs when it came to Stefan Stearns. Her daughter should be alive. This is a preventable uh, situation where a mother did not read red flags. But, you know, that's not that's not what people have been saying on the internet. The people on the internet have been saying that this lady was a participant in her daughter's death. Uh, people on the internet are saying that she knew that this daughter, her daughter was being abused in this manner and repeatedly and did nothing. And these are where I, I have problems with the reporting of that because there's nothing at all to support that. Do I believe her mom should have had should have known something was going on there that was uncomfortable? Yes, I do. Um, I believe her mother should have explored that as well. Uh, but that's my personal opinion. When you're looking at this case from a personal opinion to a factual one, you we have no history of her mom being abusive to her. her we have no history of her mom having drug or alcohol abuses. We have no history of her mom, um, you know, having an unruly uh, daughter and, you know, not taking care of her, not providing her everything she needs. You know, we, we do see that in some of these parents that we cover and it's very clear cut and dry who the problem is, right? In this case, it's very difficult. They lived a, um, uh, they lived a, 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 for all appearances, I'll put it like that. For all appearances, lived a normal lifestyle. You know, they lived in a nice community. She went to a great school. She was a good student for all, you know, again. And these are some other things is the student aspect of it. Yeah, she had some some um, attention issues. Those attention issues could have been a direct result of the abuse that she was undergoing. We don't know how threatening Stefan was to this little girl. But he was a, an authority figure for her because he was a parental figure for her. And he was doing these disgusting things to her. Oh, Crime Story is obsessed. It's nice to see you, love. I hope you're having a wonderful day. God bless you. God bless you. Rusty's up in the house. I post some of his crazy posts on my comment page. Go over to Crime Stories and check those out. Yeah. Um, there, some of the stuff, like I, I did a, a, a TikTok on one, I, I couldn't do all of, I mean, they're just, they're, they're highly disturbing for me. 
Like I'm reading this stuff and it's like, you know, I, I wonder if Jen saw those posts. I don't think she ever saw this stuff he was writing on Reddit. I feel like he was the bum and mom was just working and working and working just to keep everything paid and stuff like that. And just, you know, just that kind of, um, you know, she had nothing, she couldn't do anything but work to try to pay and support the bills because she had three mouths to feed. You know, she had a man kid. Um, I, I don't know. Again, I just don't know why I'm getting those those vibes from this case. But those are the vibes I'm getting off this case. And, um, you know, when I look into this case, it just solidifies a lot of the stuff I'm seeing here. Uh, but mom should have known. I'm not going to discredit anybody that thinks she should have known. I'm not going to discredit anybody that says that they think that Maddie told her. I don't know whether she told her or not. You know, damn her if she did. She needs to be in the cell right next to Stefan if her mom knew. Period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I think mother smothered her with a pillow as she apparently done before. It went wrong. We will see what I mean. Oh, okay. Wow. So you think she's involved, actually involved. Interesting. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, like I said, I'm open. I'm open. Maybe I'm reading this case wrong, but I'm open. Maybe, she, you know, there. I, I was uh, watching, I think it was Plunder. I was watching Plunder, and she brought up this Utah case. I haven't looked into it, but I, I trust uh, Plunder's um, observations. In You know, in, for the most part, I, have, I trust her observations. I, I've never heard her wildly, you know, explain something wildly different than it was. And she was talking about the family in Utah and how, you know, sweet the the the, the mom and, and, and the stepdad were, or the father were, and come to find out they're doing some ungodly things and, until the child was able to run away. And nobody was the wiser about what was going on behind the doors because they looked like such a normal family, you know. So in all fairness, if we are going to talk about, you know, me having a bleeding heart for the mom, we can talk about the other side about how... Um, you know, people have skeletons in their own closet that they don't want people to know about. And had the world known about it, then, you know, they would be up Schitt's Creek without a paddle. We may find that to be true. We may find that to absolutely 100% be true. I don't understand. I make breakfast for my daughter, lunch for her, finish up homework and drop her off every day. It's some of the best talks on the, but see, what if her mom wasn't the one doing that? What if Stefan took that off her plate because she's got so much on her plate? This is kind of where this grooming and manipulation and cunning and conniving all come in. It's this stuff right here. It's like what? who's controlling the daughter and who's controlling the information coming from the daughter? And at what time did this change? Mom has a hard time getting up in the morning. How many times did, a, did a Stefan take her to school alone? Like we're getting only half, not even half of the story. I think we're getting like maybe a quarter of the story of what's going on behind the scenes in Maddie's case. I think that's why they have no murder charges yet because it's a case against mom. I'm sure of it. Just my opinion. It's definitely crazy. We'll see. But you know what? I would think that if it was, like, they would they would him a rep like, um, uh, an obstruction charge for lying if they thought she was, you know, not a victim. I feel like at this point, with him being in jail for all of those charges, I kind of feel like they would, they would uh, him, the mom, you know, like, um, get her for... Um, endangerment or obstruction or negligence. Um, you know, I feel like sh they, they would have, like if they, I don't know why I'm feeling it, but if, if for any reason they thought mom was truly involved in this, I think they would hem her like they hemmed him. And they're not. She's still out walking and talking in, 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 in civilization. And they could... I mean, not that they have, but if they have one scintilla of probable cause, that's enough to make an arrest. And with what we learned, it seems like that they would have had probable cause at this moment 
to say that mom, it, it, in minimum, put her in, in harm's way, you know, was negligent and arrest her on that. But there's been no arrest of mom, not even on low-hanging fruit charges, nothing. We've had nothing for, for mom. So I don't know if that's an indicator or if that's a clue. I, I really don't know. You know, maybe it's because they don't want to charge anybody. She's staying put. She ain't going nowhere. Um, it might be that. I don't know. It just seems like Kasimi, if they truly thought that this mother knew about this child's, um, this kind of abuse with this child, it seems like they would have the silver bracelets on her one way or another. Florida doesn't play around with this stuff, guys. You know, we're not, we're not Chatham County, Georgia. We go for low hanging fruit. If they, if, if our law enforcement believes you're a primary suspect in a, in a disappearance of a child or a death of a person, if there is one scintilla of a reason to throw your butt in jail, you're sitting in jail. If you're on probation, you better be able to pass a piss test. And even then. If they think you're a suspect, they'll have the uh, probation officer pull pull you. It's at their discretion. They'll revoke. They'll revoke the, the, the probation. I'm sorry, but the mother needs to protect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I've already read that one. Susie Sue said, Grandma knew Madeline didn't sleep alone and Mom worked at night. If Grandma knew, Mom knew. Oh, Susie Sue has an excellent point. Well, that's not necessarily what she said. Apparently, her mom does come home at night because her mom came home that night after her birthday. She just was at work during her birthday during the day. So it sounds like her mom works a lot. Her mom either works later in the day and works later at night or, you know, and that might be perfect for her, especially if she's having, you know, issues getting up in the morning. But it sounded like she was at least home by eight to speak to her daughter um, or at minimum, there was some time about 10 p.m. that they said she came in. Her mom said something like she came in or something like that. So she had to have been home at least by 10 o'clock at night. So it's not like she's an all night whatever. But at what time does Maddie go to bed and which bed does she go into? And yeah, that's a great question is did she sleep with Stefan or not? That would be even more disturbing for me. But I don't know, because from what I'm hearing is that um, in the back chat is, and again, not corroborated. And this came after we all thought he was her boyfriend or he may still be her boyfriend. I don't know. But we heard that they, they were living in the house, but they weren't together. So it is possible that um, Jen and Maddie slept in a room and Stefan slept by himself in another room. It is, it's possible. I don't know if that's the case. Again, we're going on conjecture. We're going on complete and utter conjecture. How many of you mothers wouldn't pick up something wrong with your child's demeanor and change of their behavior? We have that mom's protection radar. Linda Lou, I can't, I, I can't, I can't uh, say, say you're wrong. I feel like that normal people would have that kind of reaction. But we're not dealing with a normal person. We're dealing with a, a medicated person. Would that lower that sense of, of awareness? I don't know. I mean, it's just definitely same things that we need to talk about. We can all feel that we would know, but did she? That's the real question. So why would a funeral home pay for the funeral, but say you pay for cremation? Maybe because the cremation was probably the out-of-pocket expense that they didn't want to actually pay for, where um, the funeral itself is basically the facility and the people that are speaking and the pastor or the priest or whatever, you know, you're paying for the, the service itself. But uh, sometimes that, you know, they, they donate the service. They, they're not going to charge you their fees, uh, but they're charging you any of the actual physical costs that they have. Um, that might be that would explain that, but that uh, doesn't mean that that that's the case either, but you did ask the question. So I am explaining what could, what it could be. She was over medicated and didn't realize what was going. See, that's what, that's more in line with where I'm kind of feeling on this because I just don't see this. We see terrible moms. We see terrible moms, but then I'm going back to like, I'm so confused. Then I go back to plunder and plunder is talking about this, this wonderful, beautiful family from Utah that nobody would th be the wiser that that was doing these horrible things to the kids. 
and you're looking at this woman and, and she just looks she just looks pitiful to me and i just i don't know my heart bleeds for her and i don't know why especially when half of my chat is like ready to burn her at the stake i don't know why i just i just don't see what you guys are seeing in her i i just don't i feel but i feel um ashton that that you know that's kind of how i really felt when i realized how much medication she was on Cremation is a whole different price from a funeral. Yeah, two sons uh, when he was murdered. Aw. <laughs> I paid for the cremation fees. Yeah, I think that's what it was. It was just the services that they are paid for, you know, something that doesn't really, that they can just, you know, pick a day and, and run with it. It doesn't really disrupt their, their proceedings they have with other paying clients. And they're allowing you to use the facilities and giving you, you know, the pastor to, you know, I mean, it is, it, it's not entertainment, but it is a production, you know, it's, it is a, a, a funeral. So it is for production. I heard she collected $16,000. Yeah. And actually 16, everybody's like, oh, 16,000, $16,000 is right about where uh, it costs to have funeral, a funeral. And uh, I'm not going to be pocket watching uh, that woman and what she's going through because, I mean, if it was something like $160,000, you know, yeah, it's, we all know um, funerals, unexpected cost. You know, she's probably not working right now. She's probably got, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to pocket watch $16,000. It's just, it's you know, especially when people are, are raising that, you know, tens of thousands of dollars off of scams. You know, I'm not going to pocket watch a woman that lost her daughter when she's only raised $16,000. Um, I'm just not. Yeah, basic cremation is 18 to 3,000 funeral. You choose products, services you buy, and where you live all impact the price. The cost can increase fast when adding things up. Yeah. Well, I used to sell, um, you know, I used to sell life insurance once upon a time. I did just about everything. I was always in sales of some sort, whether it be homes, insurance products, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, I, I know what funeral costs cost back when I was doing it, what, 15, 15, 20 years ago. Okay. And that was 15, 20 years ago. We know how prices have skyrocketed. It, 15, 20 years ago, it was $20,000 to have a meager, a meager funeral. $20,000. That was burial. Okay. Just to let you know that that inc included a casket in, in traditional burial. $20,000. That didn't include the plot. That didn't include um, the, the limousines. That was the funeral and the burial. The funeral and the burial. $20,000. So I don't even want to, I don't, I, it, it makes me sick to my stomach to think about what the cost this day and age to put somebody in the ground is. It's got to be um, pretty costly this day and age. Everything's gone up. Things like viewing or visitation, memorial flowers, music expense. Yeah, it, it does run uh, stuff up. So we don't know. And they, they may have provided the entertainment that might've been part of this stuff. They, like I said, it sounds like uh, it, they, they were just required to pay any out of the pocket, you know, any, um, straight cost that the uh, funeral home would, uh, receive in the funeral expenses. So I, I think, I think that sounds like a little more like it, but anyways, all right, guys, that's really all I have. You know, I'm not going to go over the charges with you guys. If you want to go look at those charges, you can read, um, the charge sheet yourself. It's, uh, I will caution you. It's, it's highly disturbing. Again, it goes from head to front to back. It's not, it's, 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 it's not a pleasant read. It's a very disturbing, um, and it's a very emotional um, document. That's, that's my assessment of it. And um, if it was this hard for me to read through it and uh, get choked up over it, I, 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 I'm not going to be able to go through it. I mean, there, there's other people that, that, can, that can get through it. I can't. Okay, I personally just, I can't. I, I looked at it. I read it. Um, I was trying to figure out a way to, and I just can't. I can't. It, it, it bothers me. It, it bothers me so much that I just, I, you know, I guess in a way I have, I, you know, I tr it triggers me a little bit. 
okay? And if it's triggering me, I, I don't get triggered very easily. Um, so if it's triggering me, then it, it, it's, it's, it's problematic. So, um, not, 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 um, not covering the actual physical charge. I mean, we'll talk, cover the actual, like the charges, the, the straight reading of the charges, the description of what got derived those charges, which they do describe the acts that got those charges. And that's the stuff I'm not willing to go through. I'm not willing to, um, it was bad guys. That's, that's all I can say. It was, it was bad. Um, it appears according to the, um, records here. Hey, lady seven up. It's nice to see you. Um, let me see what you said. Hold on. I can't afford to live. Can't afford to pass away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that the truth, right? Ain't that the truth, you know, and then all this stuff about TikTok and then having our look, yeah, you know what? It just that just triggered me, uh, Lady Seven Up. That just triggered me. You know how they're trying to like the ban TikTok, and they're not banning banning TikTok. They're saying they're trying to force the Chinese company to divest it, uh, which I think is a bad idea personally. But you know, whatever. Their 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 thing is to scare the world and say, "Oh, China's going to get our information." Okay, newsflash: China has had my freaking information since the doctor patted my ass, okay? I don't know about each of you, but if you think our private information at, at, at like what, how many, how many data breaches have we had across this country? Um, what, a billion data breaches, right? That we, we personally typed in our own personal information to these stupid companies and all of a sudden they get hacked and there are millions, uh, hundreds of millions of names. It, guys, if you think that China doesn't know who you are, where you live, whatever, I, I digress. You know what? If the government says TikTok, uh, I, I, listen, I don't know what value I can provide the Chinese Communist Party. I really don't. I don't know why my movements really matter to them that much. I'm not a high, If you're worried about them, their intel, turn, turn, uh, the government needs to turn it off. But I don't see what in, intel that is going to be national security that by by China, the co Chinese Communist Party knowing that I am in my home right now running a live, I don't know what value that's going to provide to them. I, I really don't. You know, if, 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 if the Chinese Communist Party can find a way to turn that into cash, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I, or, or a war, I mean, <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense to me. They're arguing some. They're arguing this for an emotional response from the American people about this data breach and data security and using these big, high-powered words. If you honestly believe that the world, that the black web, does not have every one of our information on it, you're 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 an ostrich. You're an ostrich. Okay. I I think at this point. The only reason why we still have our social security numbers is because the government doesn't doesn't want to admit that they're obsolete at this point, right? I really, I truly don't. I, I truly believe <laughs> they make you still do the the social security number just for the simple fact they wouldn't need, need to identify you by number because again, we're nothing but a number to our government, right? We we got to be numbered. We gotta we gotta be pinned, right? We need to have our little ear pen for our government. Um. But I don't want I don't think they want to tell the people that that it's obsolete. So the reasons why they're taking uh, TikTok or trying to divest TikTok, it sounds like it might actually happen. Um, I, I think it's for stupid reasons. I, I Again, if, if the government's concerned about security, then tell the employees and the government to stay the hell off TikTok. We don't want them on TikTok anyways. Right. Um, if you really want my honest opinion about it. We got enough enough talking heads about politics. I'm I'm joining that that diatribe. So it's it's like you know I really don't care. Keep the government off. I don't see what Bullhorn Betty has to offer the Chinese Communist Party. That's all I'm saying. I don't know what uh, Big Mac Mike has to offer the Chinese Communist Party. You know, I really I just don't. So whatever. I think it's our VIN number. <laughs> No classic. <laughs> you must, oh, 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 I just realized <laughs> I was going to say something. I was going to say I was going to say something, but I didn't want to say it because I, I I've been I looked at the numbers years ago, and I can actually tell the age range. 
of people based on their, their first three numbers of their social security. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's serious. It's serious. I can basically tell you what generation you're from, from the first three numbers of your social security number. So don't go give me the first three numbers of your social security number. Don't test it, but I'm telling you, uh, you know, I'm a five, you know, other family members are a two, right? That's just the first number. So if, if that tells you anything, right? If that tells you anything, I'm a five, family's a two, who's older? The two's older than the five, okay? The two's older than the five. All right. All right, guys, you guys have a wonderful day. God bless you. Uh, it's happy hump day. Happy hump day. So hopefully today's a little better than yesterday. Yesterday was a little crazy. I don't know what the hell I did, but I ended up totally screwing up my schedule. But I will survive. Today's a new day. And my schedule, I have made sure, is absolutely accurate and correct. God bless you guys. Have a great day. And just to give a shout out to our channel members and supporters, November Rain. Ha! Right? The rain. We got staff. Ha! That's my, that's my yelling and laughing because we don't have... Oh, ooh, I do have buttons. I do have buttons. They're not going to sound as good because they're not hooked up. I'm, I'm, I'm so frustrated with my, my soundboard. I don't know what happened to it. It was working fine. Never had a problem with it. Well, I had minor problems here and there, but not too much. And then boom, it just stops working. Like it works. It's lights up, but it's not functioning. Like it's like it usually does. It's just not functioning like it usually does. And I don't like it. I'm sorry. I'm picky. All right, let's try this again for our, our channel uh, supporters and subscribers. <laughs> it sounds good. And then we got, so let's go back. We got November rain. Yay. <laughs> we got stuff. <laughs> and we got one gifted bullhorn Betty membership. <laughs> to let you guys know before I left, I got, um, you know, yesterday was a little chaotic for me. I screwed up my schedule massively. I don't know how the hell I did it. I, I couldn't tell you, but the way I look at it is things happen for a reason. So whatever it is. So I was kind of having like, you know, the, 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 the beginning part of my day was, was okay because I was blissfully unaware that I screwed up my entire schedule. But by the end of the day, a little, little, little less comfortable, right? And so one of my mods reached out to me, I got to tell you this, and gave me some of the best news. It really brightened my day up yesterday. I just found out that we meet, met the budget of the camera. The camera is on the way to Bullhorn Betty right now and should be here tomorrow. been raising money for this camera for almost a year. Um, we, I, I started out with actually a video camera, video, like, you know, uh, it was like almost $4,000. And as I was out in the field, I realized I really do need not just a video camera. I need another camera that does great videos. And so it changed what I was actually looking for. And when I started looking for what I really needed uh, in the field, I found a perfect camera. It had great ratings, great reviews, and it wasn't the most expensive camera on the freaking market, thank God. And it took us forever to finally get the camera. It seemed like forever, right? But it's on its way here. So I just want to tell everybody because I don't know who all supported that camera. I don't know who, all, I know a few of the people um, that gave for that camera. I want to thank those people, mostly my mods that gave those big, big. So thank you God, mods. My mods are very supportive of our channel. So I just want to say that. And I know there was a lot of other lovely people out there that gave just as much. 
And so while I know what my mods did, I don't know who else did. So I wanted to come here and tell whoever supported the camera, whoever gave one dollar to that camera, I just want to say overwhelmingly, thank you. This is something that's going to be utilized on this channel for years to come. It is a good quality camera that has great uh, video capabilities, much better than the, the camera I currently have. It is going to be amazing. I think we're going to love the uh, creations we're going to get from this. And um, I'm just really appreciative of everyone. Okay. Because I, again, I don't know who, who was there. I know what my mods did, right? But I don't know any of you. I don't know any because they kept it a secret from me. They kept it a secret from me. So I just want to tell you all, thank you. I know it wasn't my mods and my mods alone. So everybody that contributed to that, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hope you guys are happy with what we are going to be able to do with this camera. So God bless every one of you. Um, anyways, guys, that's it. So you guys have a great Wednesday. God bless you. Go rock it out with your coffee beans out. And don't forget to be fearless. If you see something, say something. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And until next time, please be safe. And more importantly, be kind to thy neighbor. Let's do something positive in the names of our victims today. Crystal Roger and Madeline Soto. Please do an act of kindness to a perfect stranger for a perfect stranger uh, in their honor. Um, CN, buy somebody behind you a cup of coffee, right? Sometimes it doesn't even have to be monetary. You see a little lady struggling to get her groceries in the car, go over and help her. Do something nice. We want to change the world one person at a time. God bless.